Hey everyone, this is going to be a short tutorial on how to fix a specific error message inside Visual Studio Code. So what I did here is I completely clean install Visual Studio Code on my computer in order to actually get this error message. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a new file and I'm going to go ahead and set this one as a PHP file by clicking the uh, plain text button we have down here in the right corner. And I'm going to set it as a PHP file and you'll immediately see that we get an error message it says cannot validate since no PHP executable is set. PHP executable not found, install PHP 7 and add it to your path or set it to PHP executable path setting. Okay, so because Visual Studio is a bit more non-user friendly than other text editors such as Atom or Sublime Text, it does want you to set a executable path to PHP. Now, if this is your first time seeing this error message, you might be thinking, what? I need to install PHP in order to actually do this. Um, in which I have to say, well, we kind of do, because remember, when we do need to use PHP locally on our computer, we need to install a server, which is going to be locally set on your computer. So we need to install a local host that we can access to inside the browser, meaning that there's a lot of software out there. You have VAMP, you have XAMP, you have... Uh, MAMP, there's a lot of them out there. And the one I have installed on my computer is the one called XAMP, which looks like this. Okay, now XAMP is just one of the possibilities. It doesn't matter if it's XAMP or VAMP or MAMP or any of these software that we have out there. The fact is that you just need to have one of these to have a server running on your computer. Remember, when you do need to access PHP code on your computer, or at least inside the browser, you need, you need to have this htdocs folder where you need to insert your websites into. Okay, so this is the thing I'm talking about. Now inside this software, if I were to go back inside my XAMPP uh, main directory, you know, where we do actually install it on our computer, you'll notice that we have a folder called PHP. Now, if you have VAMP or something else, then you should also have a folder called PHP inside the main directory. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this path and you'll notice that we have a PHP executable inside this folder right here. And this is what we need to link to in order for this error message to go away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the path into this specific folder where the executable is. I'm going to copy it. And then what we need to do is we need to set the path that is asking for inside uh, Visual Studio Code. And we do that by going inside this computer. I am aware that my computer is in Danish. I'm sorry about that. I need to change that. <laughs> um, but you're going to right click on this computer. Then you're going to go to properties, which is at the bottom here. Then you're going to go to advanced system settings on the side. Again, I apologize, mine is in Danish. Uh, once you go in here, you're going to go to advanced and then you're going to environment variables. I believe it's called. It's the button here at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> you're going to click it. And then you're going to get a bunch of things going on in here. Now, what we want to do is we need to set user defined variables for that specific user. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double click on path. And then you guys can see we have a bunch of things open here and you're going to click on new at the top right corner. Then you're going to paste in the path that you just copied from inside example or vamp or whatever you might be using. And then you're going to click OK. OK, then we're going to click OK again. And now if we were to close down Visual Studio Code, open it back up, we should no longer get this error message. That, as you can see, we still have our PHP file here. This is the one that's open. I can actually open it again if you want to. I'm just going to change this one to PHP. And now you guys will see we have no more error messages. So this is how we can get rid of it inside Visual Studio Code. And again, it's sort of a fun thing because I used to use Visual Studio Code a lot on a previous computer and then I started getting into YouTube tutorials where I would teach using Atom or Sublime Text. And the reason that I didn't start teaching using Visual Studio Code inside my YouTube channel is because we do run into errors like, like these. So it's not really that user friendly if you're completely new at web development. Okay, so just go ahead and stick with Atom or Sublime Text if you think there's too many errors with this software. So this is at least how I can fix this error when it comes to PHP. Another tip for you is if you were to go back to the welcome page, you can actually see we have some tools over here you can actually install. So if you want to get tools for PHP or Python, then you can actually click it and it will go ahead and install tools for those specific languages. So I do recommend that you start doing that once you do actually install Visual Code for the first time. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.
I'd like to say thank you to all the people supporting me on Patreon. If you're interested in extra benefits such as lesson materials, then go ahead and visit the link that you see on screen here, and I'll see you guys next time.